and welcome everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Adam from Miller's Custom Guitars and the N Plus One podcast. And on this podcast, it's all about hobbies, passions, obsessions, and it's all about not just what we're obsessed about and the thing that we're focusing on, but what is next, what's on the horizon, um, not just the guitar that we have in our hands, but the next one. How many guitars is enough guitars? N Plus One. We always need one more, and that's what this podcast is. All. And I, I'm really, um, I'm really pleased to be joined by my guest today. Uh, this is my friend Joe Scaff. Joe, welcome. You can say hi. Thank you, thank you, Adam. Hey, hi. Thanks for coming. Hello, in. everybody. Um, and Joe is a friend of mine. I've known Joe. I don't know, man, what ten years, maybe, maybe yeah. longer. Yeah. Joe is, is such an encouraging person. Just, Joe's been an educator. He's done a lot of things, and he's such an encouraging person. And we were hanging out at the at the lake over in Tween Heart. And he's like, hey man, what's going on? And this was back in, I don't know, August. And yeah. I said, well, you know, I think I might be a crazy person, but I'm decided that I'm developing a podcast. And he's like, oh really, tell me about it. So I was telling him all about it because as this whole podcast is about hobbies, passions, obsessions, I wanna get people on the podcast talking about the things that they're obsessed about and passionate about. So I was talking about it, right? I just couldn't stop. And he goes, man, this sounds so interesting. This sounds so you know, amazing. And by then I'd had a couple episodes in the can and he's like, I want to hear it. I'm like, no, you don't. No one wants to hear this thing that I'm making. He's like, no, I want to hear it. <laughs> and so I sent him, I uploaded a um, I didn't have the art. I didn't have a bunch of things, but I uploaded him a, I uploaded a rough version of the first episode with my sister, Bethany, um, to YouTube as a private video. And I sent it to him and I was, and I was genuinely looking for constructive criticism. I wasn't just looking for a pat on the back and Joe, thank you so much. Cause you were, you were genuinely helpful. It wasn't just a pat on the back. You, you gave me some really good advice, but you were so mm -hmm. encouraging and saying, you know, Hey, way to go with, you know, following your passions. What came up in that conversation was that you are a painter, which I didn't mm -hmm. know. I've known you all these years. I didn't know that you painted. So first of all, thank you so much because I might not have had the confidence to keep going uh, without oh. your encouragement. So thank you. You're welcome, Adam. Um, My pleasure. And, uh, and also some of the direction that we went on early probably wouldn't have got without some of that feedback that I got from you. Um, but also yeah. when I heard that you were a painter, which I never knew because I knew you were an educator, you were, what was it? A principal? What, what did you do? Well, I taught for 20 years and I was a school administrator for 20 years. Oh yeah. So either way you go, yeah, I've been in schools for a long time. Yeah. So I knew you did that. And then, um, and then you're retired and, um, they always say when you're retired, that's when you get busy. That was so you, that's why you call it retired because you can get tired again. But I didn't know what you yeah. were up to. I know you volunteered in church a lot and I know you sing in a band, which is kind of where we kind of teamed up. Um, yeah. And you said, yeah, you're painting. And I'm like, I didn't know this about you. Um, and so I said, Hey, you know, this pot, this podcast is about passions. And so, Hey, I haven't talked to someone that does, that's like a painting artist. I talked to uh, Jed Roberson, who's a, a photographer. I talked to John C. Brown, who's a acting artist. I talked to a couple of musicians. Um, I haven't talked to a painting artist yet. So um, yeah, let's 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 um, let's start talking. Um, so yeah. once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, I just wanted to say, I always start by by saying this um, in your description. Um, how would you describe like art the way you do it? Um, and I always say like, describe it like you would to a five-year-old. Um, like uh, what, what are your mediums that you're painting on? I've seen some of your art um, and like, what are you trying to accomplish? And then we'll, we'll kind of segue into how did you get into it? Great. I, I'm going to answer that question by asking you a question. First. Sure. Oh yeah. Seeing as you've, you've been talking about various people that are considered artists, which they are, yeah. Jed and all the rest, what do you think are the similarities with people like yourself that are artists? What do you feel? Give me one or two similarities. Well, for me, um, art is you, you have nothing 
and then you create and then there's something you know so that that's where i that's for me is art is creating um uh, creating something from nothing um for me art is um a lot of time for the way i do it a lot of times involves collaboration you know uh, not always but for for me because i'm a musician right so for art um usually um tries to invoke emotion um that you know that's you know in in the art that i'm familiar with whether good or bad or um you know otherwise um i, I have to say that's that's what i would kind of think of when i think of art good okay i, I the reason i'm asking you that is so the reason i got into the arts at all was exactly what you said i i got the idea to create something out of nothing you're right and i have a feeling that if you can and i tell my grandchildren this if you can think it you can draw it if you can see it you can draw it i'll come into that uh, that whole notion in just a minute you asked me about medium now i have to step away just for a second to get a couple of things yeah sure go ahead that's all right so i'm yeah. going to keep talking one of the mediums i started with is pencil so this is a pencil on canvas this is a I don't, does that show up at all? There we go, right there, and hold it still for a minute. Oh, there we go, okay. All right, so you get the idea. It's a cowboy with a lone calf, and it's in a snowstorm, but it's it's um, it's pencil, so you don't have any detail, right? Okay, yeah. It's just, you kind of, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. So you get the notion, you see, you can kind of see what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that's um, that would be... Um, the pencil work is really the preliminary to something. Yeah. So I'm going to take that, take that and go to pen work. So I use a pen. I either use a hot quill, a, a, a feather, real sharp pointed. You know, when you yank a feather out of a turkey, they're real sharp. Well, you don't because you don't yank turkey feathers. No. But if you had a hawk and you pull his feather out, in the old days, they used quills to use, I guess when the Constitution folks signed the Constitution, they didn't have a ballpoint pen. Okay. They use quill, quills and ink. So this is a, a quill work. I'm going to hold this up too. This is a, um, it's called, um, it's a trial for a 30 inch by 40 inch acrylic painting in color. So this is what I do in ink, first in pencil, Adam, okay. then in ink, and I then I paint from this. Now this is... Um, 14 by 20. Okay. No, not a big canvas. Go ahead. You had a question. So you're, you're using like actual hawk quills? Well, I have some I use. And I also use this regular, um, I use these pens. Shoot, I have one right here. I'm sorry. I keep jumping up and down. This is a pen. It's called a Micron. Oh, yeah. Sure. I've seen Very those. Very small. you see seen those? Yeah. Well, My wife has some, some of those. If, I, if the pen gets dull and it's raining outside, I come in here and I use these guys. Yeah. Because the quills get wet and they, they get kind of mushy. Okay. So now from that point, I go to from the, the trial run of the pen, then I'll lay out the canvas and pencil very carefully what I'm going to be doing and uh, start the painting. And I use acrylics only. Acrylics only. Okay. So, so you, that's the first part. So you have this, you have this process where you go from pencil to the, 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 the hawk quill pen to the paintings that with the acrylic. Yep. And, and so like, if something's not working, you might not progress to the next phase or you might work it until it goes, until it's ready to progress. Yep. Yeah. Like this, this painting with the Cowboys, for instance, it, you have to take, I guess there's some engineering going on there because you have to take this size and make it this size. Yeah. From small to king size. And to get that, you have to kind of understand anatomy. Yeah. And I've been doing it. I've been doing this since I'm, in seventh grade. Okay. So you wanted, how long have I been painting? Um, since about seventh grade. And I got stuck into that by accident. It just happened. I was doing some drawing and like every kid in school that I knew, we doodled more than we did anything <laughs> else. Te teachers talking and I'm doing them, doing some doodling stuff. And I ended up, I don't know how, but it came out like a, a regular drawing of something. And I continued with it and continued with it and started taking lessons. Yeah, and so you take um, you took lessons. I, yeah, I do. I wow. still do. Oh wow, that's amazing. Now, now it's on YouTube, but sure, um, you have to you have to grow. You have to learn, like you would do. Yeah, as a musician. 
Yeah, that's that's awesome. So I love that you are. This is something that came that started as a as a young person, a passion that you've that you've had, you know, with your whole life, career, and everything, um, and that you've that you've never let go of that. But you've also that you've also invested into it. You've you've literally put money into growing mm. the craft of your art, right? So, like mm. you mentioned with guitar with lessons, and I, I was talking to. Um, Meredith Coloma last week, and uh, we were talking about how nowadays it's like the golden age of of information, right? Um, you can literally learn how to do anything online right now. You know, I mentioned this last week on the episode; it hasn't come out yet, but it will. Um, that that when Desiree came to me and said, "Hey, I want to learn how to u- learn learn ukulele," well, I'm like, "Well, that's all well and good, and I can show you around a little bit, but I don't play le- ukulele." You know, so when it came time for her to want to learn, like I paid for our our friend Larry to give her lessons yeah. because he is a teacher and he's an amazing teacher. Yeah. And you can show, you can go learn things online and there's a good lot of value to that. But having like an actual instructor that is giving you that feedback is so helpful. And um, I love oh. that you, um, that you, that you're still uh, investing in, you know, in growing your craft and everything. That's amazing. Um well, it's critical. I, I look at this, you know, I'm a certain age that I want to continue to grow in what I'm doing, to be better at what I'm doing. And right now I'm involved with um, subject matter that I have never painted before, never worked with this um, this subject. And it, it to me, it's the start of a, a career. Wow. That's amazing. I'll get to that. Okay, we'll yeah. talk about that in a minute. When it comes to painting like this, what are some misconceptions that you've come across? Or that you've okay, found gonna, that you've had. Um, let me ask. Let me answer that question by asking you a question again. Okay. Can you draw? I am a not very good drawer, drawist, draw person. <laughs> I'm. I can doodle. <laughs> I can doodle very good. I'm. I'm not a very good artist. Um, there's things that I can. You know, I can sketch and like get convey like what I'm trying to draw, but I'm. I'm not very artistic that way. You know, I'm artistic other ways. Yes, you are. I understand. I've heard over the over the course of my life, Adam, a, a lot of people say one thing. I can't draw. I cannot draw. I can't draw anything. I can't draw a stick figure. Now, I don't know why you'd want to draw a stick figure, but I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. Maybe you have too. And so the misconception is you can't draw. I'm going to go back to what I said before. If you can... If you can see it, envision it. If you can dream it, you can draw it. If you can see it, you can draw it. I'll give me an example. This is what I did for your show. This is for your show. Self-portrait. Two years old. And it's a little stick figure with a, of a person with ears. This is for the audio listeners, okay, because we have YouTube and audio. Little self-portrait. It's um, spelled, <laughs> spelled kind of in a silly way. It's got... A stick figure with uh, ears, which I don't think I've seen. It's sticking his tongue out. It says two years old. It's adorable, by the way. It's a really cute picture. Thank you. Thank you. Now, look at my ears. Big ears, big ears. (laughs) I could see it. I could draw it. I think that's the misconception. And I think people think it's expensive. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Oh, painting is expensive, and it takes so much time. Well, I don't know what else they're doing, but if you want to paint or you want to draw, you want to represent, you know, I've, I've yet to meet somebody that doesn't go out in springtime and see something. It's our, we live in the most beautiful area. Yeah, it's You can take beautiful. five minutes and be at any river or creek and yep. just see beautiful wildflowers. And if you don't want to paint that or take a photograph of that, I, I'm just kind of amazed. But if you want to, you can do that. Um, we'll get to some how to do that uh, a little later in your question. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, and you mentioned drawing with with stick figures and that's there was this when i was uh, when i was younger like i mentioned i'm not very like artistic you know, draw a flower i'm like eh, you know draw you know draw a dog you know it's it's like it's like an oval lump with with sticks right but there was a while there was a time where where a friend of mine and i we did like doodle wars right which was like stick figures battling right and we, man, we did this for so <laughs> long and it was basically a long running, almost like a comic book, right? Where, okay, m- you know, my stick figure would, you know, 
you would animate these little panels and it would murder his stick uh-huh. figure. <laughs> and then I would give the book to him. And then his job was to bring his stick figure back to life and then murder my stick figure. And then the challenge was you could never bring your stick figure back to life in, in, in any way that had been done before. And you could never murder a stick figure in any way that had been done before. <laughs> we did this for months and months and months. We did this so long. And, you know, you know, I got really good at conveying um, motion and conveying energy and conveying, um, you know, conveying a story with these stick figures, you know, where I would say, you know, I can't draw, but I can, I can still convey a story with these little boxes and with these stick figures. So, yeah, you say, well, can you draw? Not really. I can't draw a dog, but I can still tell a story with these stick figures that, you know, if you're following along, you could be like, well, yeah, I know exactly what's happening. If you don't have any hands and your lips are sewn together and your toes are molded together, I guess you can't draw. But you can, obviously, you can draw. Yeah. Don't worry about the dog. The dog will come later. You got the people thing going. That's cool. Yeah. Stick, well done, Adam. Stick figure people. Um, what, are you, yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you uh, consider some of the biggest challenges uh, in your pursuit of this? Or... Maybe do you have any notable bad experiences that you look back and really maybe um, potentially derailed you or set you back for a while that you look back at and you remember those? The challenge for us here, we have a small house. I don't know if you rem- do you remember Pastor Rick. I do remember Pastor Rick, yes. Rick Larson. Well, we ended up, we bought his house mm. seven years ago. It's a small house and I don't have a studio. My challenge is when I paint, if I could take, I, I probably won't do this. If I could take the camera and just flip it, I'm at our dining room table, and I have the dining room table set up now, just like I do when I'm when I'm working on paintings. I I have a tendency to work on four, five, or six paintings at a time, so the whole table is full, packed mm. with painting supplies and canvases, and the chairs have canvases on them as well. <laughs> so my my I. During the summer, I paint outside on the deck. Sure, that sounds um, nice. Have I had? Yeah, it's nice. And yet, my wife is always saying we need to convert some area around the house into a studio. But for now, the dining room is the studio. So don't come over here when I'm painting. There's no place to eat. <laughs> so the, I think that something that happened um, has happened to me, and maybe artists. This goes on. We're kind of temperamental. I'm proud of the work I do, and yet if I don't like what I do, I've torn canvases to shreds, mm. and the, which has caused time lapse. I have to restart if I have an art show coming up, which we do in April. There's a countywide, uh, Tuolumne County Arts Association is putting on a show. Um, and uh, if I get crazy and I don't like the work and I shred it, that's a piece I could sh- I could have shown. Um, that's the only thing that really happened that's an in- injury or a a possible issue. Nothing else. I mean, I've had nothing but success with this stuff. Uh, I love what I'm doing, especially now with the Western stuff. Yeah. Well, well, this is one thing I wanted to ask you. Just, just question popped into my head, and I know that it's it can be a uh, a problem for a lot of artists, you know, musicians and everybody, right? And you just mentioned, you know, tearing up, you know, canvases. Have you found that you have at times let the pursuit of perfect get in the way of great work or good enough work? That's a great question. I would say no. And I'll tell you why. When I look at my work, I think anybody, anybody that has ever seen my work, and I do pen and ink, pen, ink, and watercolor, just watercolor, acrylic, and oil. Okay. Those media is that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Not not all at once, of course. Sure. Most of my most of my um, my pen work has watercolor in it. It looks very two dimensional, but you'll know exactly what it is when you see it. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about it. Let's see if I can answer your question with an example. Yeah, please. So my daughter my daughter graduated from um, UCSF in art many years ago. So she's an artist, and I think. She probably got that gene from me who got it from my mother. That's a story. Anyway, she's really sharp and she can she can pick up a watercolor pencil and do something. And I can't I just haven't been able to copy. I can't do that. I 
I'm sorry. I haven't done it yet. Mm. But she can do stuff. She can do stuff that I don't do. And I do stuff that she doesn't do. So I sent her a picture. I think I sent you this stuff to one of the Bronc riders. Mm. And she said, she said to me, Dad, that's cute. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I'm going to give you the name of somebody that I want you to look up. And she did. When I looked up this guy, who's a very well known, he's a young guy. And Adam, I don't know if you want me to do that during your show or after the show is over. Give me this fellow's name because people will start to look it up. Um, Go ahead and give me the name. We'll, we'll put it in the show notes. Okay, Mark Maggiore. Okay. Uh, and uh, I looked it up and I said, his work's going to look like mine. His work looks like um, Jed's photography. Mm, wow. And it's all Western. You've got to see it. And you might not believe that it's not. Uh, it's a, They're all paintings. Wow. He uses acrylic and oil. You, It's hard to delineate reality from painting in his work. Amazing. I know what she meant now. So does it get frustrating? No. Um, the hours get long. I, I've always told Terry, if I get onto a painting, I'm up. I can be up all night and not get tired mm. because it's so involved. You, you know, I think you're very similar in your artistry of your guitar work. You're so creative when you play. You spend, you got to spend a lot of time in practice. And for me, painting is practicing, is painting, is practicing over and over and over again. A lot of my work has um, no frustration in it. That's not what it's about. It's just creating. Mm. So for me, it's not. It, I don't. I don't lose lose my lose my heart in it. So destroying a, an art, a piece, it's not because it's the fell short of perfection. It's because it no. didn't meet the vision of what you had for it. Correct. I don't. I don't. I don't do perfect. What about this whole thing fills your bucket? Why? Why do you do this? Well, my mother. Um, I have a painting here for my mother, and I, I wanted to show you. Yeah, show us. She had syrup. She had um, cerebral palsy mm. when I was growing up. Is it, is it possible for me to turn the camera yeah. to, to the... You can try painting? it, yeah. So, so tell us I'm about this painting. The people. Okay, so when I was three years old, her cerebral palsy took her right arm, uh, took the use of her right arm, which was her good hand, her good hand. That's what she painted with. So she wow. had to retrain herself, Adam, to use her left hand. Wow. In two years... And this is two years after she lost her right hand. This is with her left hand. I want to show you the detail down here of the um, people. Check out the, the detail of the, just the up front people. Can you see all that okay? Yeah, that's I'm gonna, amazing. I'm going to back out a little bit. And the, and the light. The way yeah, she the does lighting the lighting is amazing. It's perfect. It is amazing, and it's huge. This is probably a, yeah, it's a, big, a 30. Yeah, it's a big painting. It is. And it's on a canvas board. I'm going to come back. So she said to me, I can remember this. She said, um, in your life, you're going to run into all kinds of stuff. Don't give up. Find another way. I, I remember her saying that. And you've heard the story probably that it was 25 years. My dad divorced my mom. And I went with my dad and my stepmom. I didn't have any contact with my mother for 25 years. Wow. And I'd forgotten all but two things mm. about her. Okay. One was her voice. One was her voice. Mm. And the second one was the smell when linseed oil, uh, if you want to, if you're using oil paints and you want to thin them out, use linseed oil. Mm. There's a certain smell, both yeah. to the oil paint and to linseed oil. And she had these gigantic tubes of oil paint and she would squeeze them out and mix it with linseed oil. And that smell was just pervasive in my, in my, not only in my nose, but in my mind, my memory. Wow. So when she called and, and called me by name, I knew her voice. Yeah. And all that smell came back right away. So what does that what does that have to do with this? Um it it it, me, it meant to me that I want to continue the creativity component that she left me as a I guess my DNA is, has got some artistic bent to it. And there's a question that you're gonna ask me. Uh, later on, that yeah. is a matter of pride for me with my grandchildren. Yeah, that DNA, that little DNA component, came from her great grandfather in Sweden mm -hmm. to her grandfather, to her pops, uh, to her, then to me, now to my daughter, my daughters, and now to two of my grandsons. I'll get to that in a little bit. Yeah, 
that linseed oil that they still use, I use it all the time in woodworking. Does that still, does that smell still bring you back when you smell that? Does it still bring you back oh, to your mom? Abs absolutely. I don't, I don't do that much oil painting. Um, because I don't have the room. I, if you <laughs> see this table, I'm like a, it's about four feet across it. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't use it a lot, but I absolutely, I, I still have a little bottle. It's yeah. probably 50 years old um, by Grumman's or something. It's a small little bottle of linseed oil. Every now and then I'll go and take a hit of that just to smell where my mom is, you know. Yeah, the next time, the next time I oil my guitar neck, I'll, I'll walk over at church and be, hey, look, hey, Joe, smell this. <laughs> yeah, I, and I will. I'll be all over it, though. <laughs> oh, I love, I love the smell of uh, boiled linseed oil, man. It, it does. It has that the smell. Um, do you have something that you might consider the the Joe Scaff signature move, or something you maybe might consider like maybe a veteran move? Yeah. Um, when I finish a piece on the back or somewhere embedded in the picture. I'll have to draw it for you. Yeah, sure. Right? I have, okay, it's a, a picture that all of my grandchildren, my kids, everybody in our family knows that it's me. So I just have to draw this. Okay. If you're listening at home, he's drawing. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it's just a picture of a cartoon guy. No problem. Um, my, my grandson, who's eight, can actually do this faster and better than I can. Now. <laughs> You're getting beat out, old man. <laughs> I'm getting beat out. That's right, and I'm proud of it. Yeah, there you go. Okay, this is a this is real quick, real rough. Okay. So this. Show it nice and close so we can see it. Okay, a little lower, a little okay. Bit lower. Okay. All okay. right. So imagine that in, um, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. Okay. So I use a very small, very small pen. And I put it somewhere in every painting. It, sometimes it's on the back. Sometimes it's on the on the um, the stretcher bars of the canvas. But that's my signature sure. move. I don't. I have a signature. I also put my name on sure. it. Sure. Jay Scaff and the date, um, the year. Mm -hmm. Last year was 22. I'm working on five paintings now. I'll finish four of them probably by Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so my name will be Jay Scaff. Um, at 23 circle and then somewhere on that painting will be the the little guy and you do the guy so the signature do you do the little guy last or or yeah you do the little guy last I, okay cool. i only do it after i sign if i sign the picture it's done and that way i know i can put the little guy on okay and you hide him somewhere i hide him nobody i don't even know if anybody knows about that but we do now we know your secrets we do now <laughs> thank you do you have something that you might consider like a uh, guilty pleasure um, when you are uh, working on, when you're doing painting, something that if someone else, maybe, uh, maybe like a, like a professional saw you doing it, they might be like, like what is going on here? But you don't care. You yeah. do it anyway. I love this question, Adam, because um, I've always wondered if what I do to get this, some of the size things that I do, um, I'm going to get a picture of a cow. Can you hang yeah, on? Yeah, we can hang on. You brought props, people. Wait, I got props. Okay, so this is this is what I'm working on. You have a you have a, a photograph of this man. Yeah, he sent. So he he also he emailed me a bunch of um, um, photos of his paintings, and we will uh, uh, um, add those on the Facebook group. So we'll upload those, upload those to the Facebook group, including this photo, which is a, a cow. Okay, this is a this is the painting. I'm I'm about a day and a half away from completing it. Okay, cool. Can you see see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm gonna take it away. Okay. This was done. Obviously, I did a photograph. My guilty pleasure is using. This is when some professional is gonna poo poo it, but I've since found other people that are professionals. I thought would have said you can't do that. That do this. So I take the picture and then I put the photographs that I take on a flash drive and then I put the flash drive don't tell anybody I'm saying this. okay I won't tell anyone I put it in a projector okay I put and then I put the canvas on my wall think about it. this is like old tiny stuff and then I project the size that I want it what the the image is onto the canvas it's my photograph mm -hmm. my flash drive my wall and my canvas. Mm -hmm. I shine it up there. I do a light pencil work 
and then I bring it back and do the painting. Yeah. Now, it sounds like it would be really simple, and it is, and that's how this these things come about. I like that. That sounds like a pretty that that sounds like pretty smart engineering there. You know, you like you said, you're not you're not stealing from anyone. You didn't download a photo off the internet. You went and took your own photo. You kind of engineered this whole get up to project it onto the to the screen to get it to the size you want it. You know, you're tracing it to get it where you need. And then you're you're doing all the work. You're doing all the painting. Yeah, I don't know why anyone would right. would would give that a hard time, but yeah, that's that's good. I like that. Well, it's a guilty pleasure. So yeah. I take, I move, I move from my um, awesome studio into my awesome living room that's twice as big, which is about the size of your bathroom. <laughs> and I have to move the projector on a, a small table in the chair back and forth. And I, if it doesn't work, I have to put bring my six foot ladder out. Mm. Talk about oaky. Then I take the doggone thing and put it on a ladder and try to get it level. And yeah. it, it works, and you can see the results. There it's kind go. of fun. Yeah. You know what that was. And I said earlier, it's not perfect, but you look at that painting, right. you know what that was. You know, right, it, you know what it is right away. And that's that's the whole thing is why is that like the results are all that matter, right? Is that like if it if it works, then it works. You know, the, in guitar, you know, we have a saying, you know, which is that you know we as guitar players we care so much about guitar, you know, gear, right? You've seen my pedal board; it's like a monstrosity. It's this huge, expensive yeah. thing, um, and we obsess about these pedals and, and the guitars um, and we can be judgy if we see inexpensive pedals or inexpensive guitars, but, or inexpensive amps. But at the, in, at the end of the day, if it sounds good, it is good. Right. It doesn't matter if, if it was, it if it was $50, you know, if it sounds good, it is good. And that's basically what you're saying is like, if the, if the, if the process works, and you ended up with with a product, you know, a product that you like, a, you know, an end result that you like, then then it's good. So, well, let me tell you the let me tell you a problem. A problem in 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 the arts is um, so I would download a picture, a photograph that is called a stock photograph, right? Free for download. Mm -hmm. Somebody else did take it, however. Somebody else took that picture, and I downloaded that onto my computer and then I put that on a flash drive and put that in my projector. That's not, no. that's not kosher. Yeah. That's not cool. Can't do that. Right. Not cool. Yeah, totally. That's a different thing. But I'm not, Don't do that people. It is. A, <laughs> and I'm not aware of, uh, I'm not aware of anybody that does that. Right. So you've been doing this. You said basically your whole life you've been creating art. Um, do you have something that you might consider your favorite um, maybe painting or maybe a favorite moment that you look back and you just like, man, that was so good. Um, uh, and I think maybe, especially with, with art, you might have one that you feel like it might be your best painting. Um, or maybe it's just a moment where you were recognized or, or someone recognized something that you painted as, as being, you know, artistic or beautiful, or I don't know. What do you think? When I was, um, I lived in uh, the other side um, in Arnold and I was painting and I, I took a trip over the pass to go fishing and I saw on oh, this is highway four and we, I stopped at Mosquito Lakes. I didn't have anything to paint with me, but I had my uh, sketchbook. Now, you know, light is really important, Adam. What right. I'm going to do with you later on is uh, when we talk about let's get into it. You and I are going to do a couple things, but one of them has to do with light and how light reflects and refracts off of the, the subject area. If you and I can look at a, um, a a plate of oranges, let's say, on your dining room table, a beautiful plate of oranges, and you're on one side and I'm on the other side, it's the same plate of oranges, right? Mm -hmm. But we see it from a different perception. Exactly. Now, if Desiree's, if Desiree's on, the, on the right of you at the table, the same plate of oranges, but she's got a different perception. So how, how that... Three different paintings will come out of that. Right. How is that possible? So I'm at Mosquito Lakes, and I noticed this about 7 in the morning, summertime about 20 years ago. And the light was just beautiful. If you've been up there, it's a tremendously beautiful area, Mosquito Lake. And I stopped, and I got out of the car, and I just looked at the, at the light on the lakes, and the lakes were glassy. And there's a little bridge that goes across between the two lakes. With a couple of really cool little um, small A-frame type houses, they look like gnome homes. Okay. Hmm. Like little gremlins would live in there. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, it's just beautiful. 
And I stayed there for about four hours, Adam, and I kept taking little pictures of my phone of the light because I knew I can combine, combine photographs from the light that I see and make it look really cool. He asked me about my favorite picture. So eventually I got home and I looked at those pictures. I went fishing and caught fish. Okay, that's Hallelujah. important. Don't forget the fish. This is important. So when I got home, I looked at those pictures and I got crazy about wanting to paint that lake and I did. But I didn't make a big painting like you just saw or the cowboys or anything like that. It was the smallest painting I'd ever done. It was um, three by three. Oh, wow. I had a hard time. I had a hard time finding that canvas. And I had a friend that is, has, was a woodworker. So he cut me some stretcher bars and I bought some canvas and stretched it. To me, the best example of patience. And I showed it to only two people. And those, that was my grandsons. One is six and one is eight. And they're terrific little kids. And out of that, when they came up here over Christmas time, and they saw all the grandpa's paintings all over the house. Now, they're not up. I have some of my work up, but we have lots of artists work up in the house. There's not a square inch of wall in this house. It isn't covered with art, but it's mainly everybody else's artwork. And there's something about color and shapes and design of different things that we have that enchanted those kids. Not every, not every child appreciates art or gets sure. it or likes it. Definitely. And that's, I understand that. But these guys, they loved it. How do we do that, Grandpa? They asked me. So I'm coming to my favorite thing. I'm going to show you how to do something in just a little bit. And I showed them, and they got it like that. They just got it. They, they're starting to paint now. Wow. I gave them each um, over this, this past Christmas. I gave them a sketchbook, some charcoal, and a, and a pencil kit. The charcoal makes the mom crazy. That's my daughter. <laughs> So she and her husband, because charcoal is really a messy yeah. medium. And it's very messy, but it's very cool to use. At any rate, they're using it well. They're outside using their sketchbooks all the time. I, I haven't even seen what they've done yet, but I can't wait to see it. Yeah. So it's a matter of passing that, passing the torch. They're interested. You know, I can't, you can't teach me how to play guitar if I don't want to play guitar. Right. I mean, you can try, but I, I probably wouldn't give a rip about it if I didn't want to. Right. They, they're the only two of our 10 grandchildren that are really, really interested. So that's, for me, that's the best. That's the best. It's not about what I've done. It's about what I'm going to teach them to do. Right. Well, and the reason, the reason that you can't, the reason I can't teach you to play guitar, if you don't want to play guitar, is because, like, I can show you the chords and show you where to put your fingers. But then when I leave, I can't make you practice. Yeah. Right. And that's where you actually progress and where you learn. So, you know, if you're showing your grandkids these tips and these tricks and, hey, you can try this and you can try that. When you guys separate them doing the craft on their own, them drawing and, and painting and arting, you know, on their own yeah, is what do. is <laughs> is what is growing them as artists, as little budding artists, yeah. you know, and Ooh. and like you said, you can't make them want to do it. And, you know, like I would love for my kids to play guitar. I mean, how cool would it be? You know, we'd have the Miller family band, but you can't make them want to if they won't want to. You know, we had a Lena and piano lessons for two years with with our good friend Linda Berry. Um, but it just didn't click. She didn't want to do it. And so when, as soon as lessons were over, it was it, that was it. There's no more piano, yeah. you know? So, so do you have any, this, I feel like this is a perfect segue. We're talking about beginners uh, with guitar. What about for art? Do you have any advice? And I feel like you're going to have really good in, insight on this. Um, someone that is, Maybe feels like you, you keep saying, uh, if you can see it, you can draw it, or you can picture it, you can draw it. Do you have any advice for draw for someone that wants to get into art, that wants to draw or paint or anything? Uh, advice for beginners? Yes, there. Thank you. Uh, first, you said something at the beginning of the podcast. I think that was very important for your listeners, and that is that in today's today's world, you can. Google or go to YouTube and find anything that you'd want to do Yep. from how to cook a steak to how to draw. And I anything. went on today and I Googled, how do I, how do I, how can I learn to draw? And there are 
thousands, thousands of responses. Yeah. I would say that if a if a child or a kid or a, an adult wants to learn to draw, it's a way. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn to paint, I'm going to give you a, a, a YouTube site. The artist's name is Juni, J-O-O-N-Y. His work is wonderful. And all you do is if you go to YouTube, you see it. He, he gives you the colors that he's going to use, the size brush, the size canvas, and you can just pause it, copy it. I've done it. I've followed what he's done just to see if I can do it. And his work is wonderful. So copying is a great great source of learning but ultimately i wrote down this just start mm. you have an interest just start yeah just get out and begin if you don't start you're going to say i, I want to learn how to draw i really do i think i could do it but i'm not if i'm not doing anything about it i'm taking some possible skill and ability and certainly the love for that media and and just not get in there I, yes you can I, I would tell the person you can do it yes you can there's people uh, anyway that's what i would say your perspective is important each person has a different perspective and it's right it's correct because it's that perspective again if you can imagine it you can do it you can draw it if you can see it you can draw it it might not look exactly like it but who's who's the judge here yeah that's 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 really good advice and um the other thing maybe i would tell people because like you said i'm i'm a musician so i i'm, a, I'm an artist in, in some facet a little bit is that, you know, like if you have the inclination to make art, um, you know, like shut down that part of your brain that has the, the doubt, you know, like the, you know, that, um, imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. like make the art for yourself. You know, if you don't want to show it to anybody and don't show it to anybody. And you also yeah. don't be afraid to show it to people because most people, they want to see your art and they they're most of the time they're going to be really supportive, but you don't have to show it to anybody. Just make it for yourself. You know, like mm -hmm. I feel like God created us to be artists in, in our heart, in our court. He created us, you know, I, I, I believe that we, he created us in his image and he's an artist. And that's why we're artists personally. That I, that's what I believe is that, that we have this in our nature to want to create, to want to create, new things and that's why we're even artistic in the first place so <laughs> you know let that free let that out of you however it looks whether it's um woodworking or photography or um cooking or um you know however it looks for you you know say yes to your inner artist people i encourage you amen Let's yeah make your make your creation yours yeah you can do that you can do that yeah and then like you mentioned um <laughs> following the, the, the YouTube video and just copying it. Well, what are you learning by copying? And this is, this is great. This is a perfect guitar analogy, Joe. I hate, hate learning guitar solos note for note. I'm a pretty good, I'm a pretty good musician. I'm a pretty good lead guitar player. And I hate learning guitar solos note for note. Oh my gosh. But every single time I do it, I learn something that I didn't know. I learn a lick I didn't know. I learn how to, I'm like, I never would have played the phrasing like this. I never would have chosen yeah. these notes in this way. And when I'm done, I'm never, I'm not going to, if I even like, I was in a classic rock band. Okay. You learn the guitar solo note for note. Okay. I'm when I'm, when I play that band, that song live, I'm not going to play that guitar solo note for note. I'm going to, I'm going to play the first couple of notes. So people recognize it. But what I did is I learned the solo and maybe I'll steal some of the licks. I'll, I'll borrow from here. I'll borrow from there. And that's what you get from following those. You learn, hey, wow, when I do this, it does that. When I I can, I didn't know that this was a technique. Um, I'm sure that that's, that, tra that that translates in art just like it does in music because it, it's just how it works. It causes you muscle memory. Mm -hmm. And you probably played, you probably played, a C chord a million times in your life. Maybe not a million, Maybe but a million. lot. Yeah. A lot. So there's two other things I wanted to mention in this, in this area. One is um, if you can find them in the, in the 1980s and you've seen this guy, a guy named Bob Ross, Bob Ross was on television and he gently, I call him the, the artistic Mr. Rogers. Yeah. He's the, he's the painting Mr. Rogers, very soft spoken. Yes. 
You can learn how to paint by watching. Just watch. You don't have to do a thing. But the best thing you can do, Adam, you might laugh at this, and that's fine, is go go to any hobby store. Go anywhere and buy a paint-by-number paint, painting. Okay. Tell me paint about this. Num- very, uh, we have hobby stores in town. That you can get them at Walmart. Okay. Abso- absolutely photographic quality paintings that are broken down into small – I'm looking behind you at the – your background okay. um, with hexagons and you've got all kinds of cubes there. Well, just imagine a painting broken down like a, a, a cross, uh, like a puzzle, just like a puzzle. And in every one of those, there's a number and the number corresponds right. to the paint and the paint is with sure. the kit. I'm familiar with any, the idea. Any, anybody, anybody, if they have an interest can take a beautiful picture home and create that beautiful picture. What it does is it, it helps people understand how to hold a brush how to use paint? Okay. Uh, how to paint? How to be gentle with it so you're not, you know, slathering it all over the place. Of course, if you're a modernist, that's great. Slather it all over the place. <laughs> it's only paint. It's a canvas and a paint. Some of us, I, I can't. I have a harder time painting outside the lines now. But originally, I was a slatherer. I just covered covered stuff with heavy paint, and I love that. But I think paint by number is another another area that somebody can do to help them to learn how to paint. So paint by colors to help you to learn, to control, uh, yep. learn to paint in the lines, to control, to put put the paint where you want to put it so that you're the boss, to give you that fine muscle control, um, to give you that muscle memory that you were talking about. That's interesting. I never would have thought of that. I, I would have thought, ah, paint by numbers, that's for kids. But but no, you're saying that's that actually gives teaches you a bunch of stuff um, that you might not have thought of. So I'm going to tell you an illegal way that you can learn how to paint okay. is to become a become a forger. <laughs> okay, work on that. I'm sorry, but yeah, forgers are among the, the best artists in the world. Okay, they have to be. They have to be. Um, unfortunately, it takes jail time to get good. <laughs> okay, so okay, so that's it's kind of a fun joke answer, but maybe in a non jokey way, like. Um, maybe try to learn the techniques of famous artists and maybe try to yes. try to not, but not for the, way. not for nefarious purposes, but maybe try no. to replicate famous paintings and learn some using their yeah. techniques. Maybe. Absolutely. Okay. There's nothing, you know, what, what is What is that term, Adam? Somebody copies you. Isn't that um, copying is the greatest form of uh, flattery. Yeah. Praise. Yeah. Flattery. Yeah. So, imitation. Imitation is the highest form of yeah. flattery. Yeah, yeah that's So there's a lot of ways to, if you have a desire, I think that's critical. If you have a desire, mm-hmm. if your desire is strong, you can learn. You can learn how to draw a thing. Cool. I'm all over that. I'm- hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you are enjoying this interview with Joe Scaff. I'll just take this minute to remind you to subscribe if you are watching on YouTube. If you're listening on an audio player like Spotify or Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio or whatever, make sure that you are um, that you have clicked follow or subscribe or whatever, and that um, that way you can make sure to get every single one of these episodes that you don't miss any, um, and that will help us out a lot. And make sure to get the word out. Another thing that you can do to help to grow the podcast, and I would really appreciate it, would be if you could take one episode, especially in the audio podcast, and um, rate that episode five stars. That would be super helpful. We'd really appreciate it. And I just also wanted to remind you that we do have a Facebook group. And um, I always mention that you can find it if you go on Facebook by doing a search for N plus one podcast, Obsessed with Obsession. But I do need to mention that every single episode, I do put the link for that Facebook group in the show notes. So if you're interested in joining the Facebook group, just follow those show notes and you can join right up and I will approve you as a member of the Facebook group in which I post um, information about every episode in the show notes and including for this episode, I will include um, images of every single um, painting that Joe talks about um, as well as some of the art that he references by other artists. So that'll be good to mention. The last thing for this week, your challenge for this week is to go, especially if you're watching on YouTube, is to go and leave a comment that shows YouTube that people are engaged and they start pushing the video out. So just 
go onto YouTube, leave a comment, just say, you know, good video, you know, enjoyed it, or even, hey, I hate you, or whatever. It doesn't even matter. YouTube doesn't care. As long as there's comments, they see that as positive. Um, and I would appreciate that. Um, or you can just even say, hey, I saw that you were asking for comments. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Or if you have questions about painting, you can ask them there, and I will ask those to Joe, and I'll see what he says. Anyway, um, with further ado, I will get you back to the podcast and Joe Scaff. Well, awesome. Let's, um, it's the time. I want to get into it. You told me to bring props. Um, you're the first person, by the way, that actually came prepared with props. And I'm very ex- You said, hey, bring these things. I'm ready. You have paper. I have a couple yeah. different red drawing utensils. What are we doing? Yeah. Okay. Let me show you my dining room table first. Okay, go for it. I, I have to... Okay, to your to your audience, this is what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And this, so, can I ask you a quick okay. question, Joe? Yes, sir. You said you usually have four or five canvases at once, which I can see what you have right now. You have like four canvases at once. Yeah. How do you paint there. four at once? You just go from one to the yeah. other, or you paint one, and while yes. that dries, you move on to the next, or what is going on here that you paint four or five at once? I designate a time. I give myself four to six hours. And based on what I'm working on, I put on some classical music and I just go. I start. Uh, the cow the cow is almost done. One of the paintings you just saw is finished. It's a black and white. Um, there's a cowboy with about a thousand head of cattle. Mm. And it strings way, way back into the snow. That's in the snow area. Um, when I was working on that, I did have to let it dry to go to another one. It's just how it goes. I mean, I, I'm I'm very impetuous when it comes to painting. Most guys, most people, most good artists would just focus on one painting. I'm not a good artist. I just like to I like to paint. So you're not you're not going between. No. You, you, so you're like working on one for a while, but then you're going to switch off, and then you're going to go to another one. But they're these are all your active paintings, all of the, that sure. are going. Yes, and I, I have get it. Um, oh over here. I've got some. Oh, my pen work. I've got three pieces of pen work mm. that uh, I've just completed and another one that's pen and ink and watercolor. It's a large, it's a duck in the middle of reeds. Mm, nice. Um, I, 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 anyway, so let's get to it. Yeah, you want to get to it? Let's get into it. What are we doing? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Okay. So, you know, children, you work with kids at church and yep. you have kids of your own. I do. When your kids make a, a drawing and you were to say, draw, um, Something with a house in it, a house. Uh, like I said, draw your house and mom and dad and the three children. Is there ever a son in that house, on that house, on that drawing? Uh, I don't know. Maybe sometimes, maybe half the time. I don't know. Okay. Where do kids, do you know where kids usually paint or draw a son? Usually in the corner. Okay, let's do that. So take your paper. Paper's going to be like this. Okay. Vertical. Vertical. Okay. Just give me a thing. Vertical. And just... Um, Make a make a half. A, I don't know if you can. Yeah, you that's that? that's exactly oh, like the type of that exactly the type of sun I would have drawn is like a like a, a quarter circle in the corner. Good and make some rays. Sun, yeah, sun, sun rays. Sun Got rays. it. Good. Okay. Now that is completely not realistic, but to the kid's right. eye, he sees sun. He, he probably asks, "What's going on there?" He said, "Look at the sun coming down. Can you yep. get a suntan there?" And a little kid to go, "You can get burned, dude. Yep. You can get burned with that sun." Yep. Okay. So now, somewhere down about in the middle of your page, doesn't don't be perfect. Okay. I want you to make a make a ball. Just make a ball about um, the size of a silver dollar, and don't work, don't get a silver dollar to copy it. Just do it rough so you have a ball. A ball about the size of a silver dollar. Yeah. See mine. Mine's terrible. Uh. Okay. Sure. About about the middle. A ball about the yeah. size of a silver dollar. Got it. Okay. So if you, oh, you're an artist. Look at you. So we talked doing about it, guys. Doing I'm arting. So when you you think about there's the sun mm-hmm. and the sun casts light onto this ball. Okay. If you if you take a line, just um, I drew a line. You split it in half. Can you see that? Okay, yes. Split the line in half. Yes, I see it. 
Yeah, just split the split the circle in half, just the line. Okay, so for the listeners at home, if you're not watching on YouTube, we drew a, a vertical line uh, straight down the center of the circle that we're just drawing. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Good. Okay. Now, which side of that circle will be lighter? So, on the, if you so on my paper, the sun is in the top right corner. The ball is the circle is in the center. So, uh, if if this was a spherical ball, or whatever the or even if it wasn't, the right side of this circle would have more would be towards the sun. It would have more light. I give up. That's that's all. We're done. Okay, you got it. Beautiful. Now, so what does that mean for the other side? So the other side, the left side, side would be darker. So what what do we how can, what do we see right now at night that is similar to that concept of light and dark? The moon. The moon You're right, right, Adam. Yes. The, the moon's big. We can look up at the moon almost any night. And we can see dark and light right. because the sun is actually reflecting off of that moon. So if that's true. And it's a ball, it should have a shadow. So I'm just going to draw a little shadow on the bottom of the ball. I'll show you. I'm going to make it darker so you can see it. Okay. I hope you can Hold see it. Hold up close so we can see it. Okay. Right. So you drew a shadow um, basically as if this was like sitting on a flat surface underneath it going to my left. Okay, should I, should I do the same thing? Do the same thing, Adam. Okay, so. Okay, so we have something like that. Oh, buddy, you got it. You know, I don't know why I'm doing this. You should be doing this now. Okay. Now take, okay, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you the pencil. Everything I've done, I've just done like this. This is hard for me because my arm, I, I don't, I'm gonna use my, my off hand. So I hold my pencil like this. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were doing too, something like that? Yeah. Okay, so I just want you to shift and hold it like this. Okay. Got it? So now we're gonna be So just real quick for the listener at home, I was holding the pencil like you would hold a pencil or maybe chopsticks, right? So we shift the grip over and now I'm holding um the pencil kind of horizontally, so like it's across my thumb and all five four of my four four fingers are across it. I'm holding it kind of horizontally now. Right. Now, Adam, you have six fingers, right? So all five fingers are on top of the pencil. Is that what you just said? <laughs> I said Weird. four fingers okay. are on top. <laughs> okay, so on the let's go back to the ball. Okay. On the left, on the left side of the ball, I want you just to shade in using this, this yes. like we just showed. Yeah. Use the side of the pencil, very, very light, almost invisible. Okay. Almost invisible and shade in the left side of that line. Show me what you mean. Okay, I'm going to try to hold it up so you can see it. It's very light. Uh, okay, sh sh the shade in the left side of the circle. Of the ball, yes, yes. the circle. Okay, with my pen and, on the it, side, my pencil on the side. On, yes, on the side. Very light, very light, super duper light. I'm not comfortable holding my pencil this way. I'll have to, that's a learned skill for sure. <laughs> You'll get it right, buddy. You can do it. The hardest part is holding the pencil this way. <laughs> and don't worry about going out the lines. It doesn't matter. Okay. I have a lightly shaded half circle. Perfect. Okay. The whole part of this exercise for you and for your listeners or your viewers to N1 Podcast is you can understand light and dark and shadows. When I showed you the painting of, from my mother... Mm -hmm. She had this excellent way of the dark is up front and the light is in the back. When you look at mountains, mm -hmm. darker is up front, lighter is in the back. And this, where the sun is, your great sun coming down, showing on that ball. If you wanted to make it more, you can just um, increase the darkness on the outside part of the circle. A little okay. darker. Yeah, and I see what you did there. Not much. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just... So you can you can see where it is. Now I'm gonna have you do one more thing. You have another piece of paper? I do. Okay, same pencil? Yep. Okay, um you have to follow instructions. 
Okay. You ready? I'm following. I'm going to ask you to. I want you to do, draw a snake, and you can you can make your snake um, really. You can make the snake real long, sort of like this. Okay. Like a, like a river, or you can make it quicker. So the, the the little loops in the snake are real quick. I'm going to do two of them and show you. Okay. Now is this like a just a single line snake or like a like a yes just single line single line. Snake. I'm going to make two, and you want to make them so that the okay. I'm going to hold it up so you can. I don't know. I hope you can see it. Okay. I see that. There's two kinds. Okay. Okay. It doesn't look like much. I mean, any. I think anybody that could say I can't draw can do this. I okay. mean, I, I imagine even if your, even if your hand slips, you can make a squiggly. Okay. Yes, it's a squiggly. So, now I might have ruined it because I have a squiggle, but my my snake turned back halfway through. Well, that what I'm going to show you that could be a tail. Don't worry about it. Okay. Don't worry about it, my friend. <laughs> just just have to do it. Okay, so I'm going to attach these lines. This will be the last thing I show you, and I'll explain why. I'm just going to use the um, – when you look at this, I'll point to it. Okay. Um, this one. Okay. This one here. Yeah. So all I did was I, I attached those. I'm going to hold that up, Adam. Can yeah. you do that on your snake? Let me attach those. lines basically straight down on the squiggles. Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to – I'd like to see it when it's done. I want to get your opinion of what it looks like, yours. And you want to make it as, you know, as straight as you can. So mine kind of looks weird. I can't see it. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you kind of. Okay, you went way big, and that's good. And then you do both sides. Okay, I got it. Um, okay, can you turn that page? Just turn the paper over and make another one uh, a little narrower. Okay, man, make, make it, it narrower. narrower. Yeah, there's a, a reason I'm having you do this. Okay. This is something from nothing. Okay. The, the nothing is the original line. So okay. if you can so make I got a narrow. Snake, I have a narrower one. Okay. Oh yeah. Now hook the lines up. Hook, hook, the lines up. hook the lines up like I've got mine. And tell me what you see come up. You'll see it right away. Okay. What does that look like? If you if you can't see it on yours, look at mine. What does that what does mine look like? Uh, I mean it looks like uh sheets or, or something, like a blanket or something. Ribbon? Yeah, like, like a, a ribbon? fabric or something. Perfect. Yeah. Now you can teach this to your children now. Easily, they can do this, and then you just teach them about shading. I want you to imagine that the sun in this picture is above this ribbon coming okay. down. So, so draw draw a I'm sun gonna, in the corner and put, or just imagine it. Just imagine it. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow in here, just a little bit, and you'll see where um, when I show you mine. Just a, just a little bit. Terry and I have worked with elementary kids, and when we did this. The elementary and the middle school kids, the middle school kids love this. Mm. Just little bits, just a little bit of shade. Okay. And they took colors. Right in the started, corners? Which are, yeah, just in the corners, just enough to make it It's different. It's just a little delineation. Now, uh, the good artists will, of course, be a lot better at this, the shading. But you and I, we're just making it, we're just having fun. Yeah, so uh, maybe something kind of like this? Yeah. That's it. Now, Adam, I want you to do me a favor. Don't ever say you cannot draw again. Don't do it. So you just you just did a, you showed everybody how you understand the concept of light and dark and shade. And you just did you made a ribbon. You show that to your kids, they will remember that forever. My eight year old taught my six year old, and now they have a painting that is absolutely majestic that they've done together. Wow. That's the end of that, buddy. That's all I know. Yeah. Cool. So, Joe, thank you so much for that lesson. That was great. Um, what is, for Joe Scaff, what is N plus one? What is coming down the pipeline? Um, I know you have some paintings you're working on. 
Uh, do you have any big shows, showings or anything coming up? What, what's, what is in plus one? What's next? There's two things. Um, the art show I've got coming up, there's one in uh, Columbia over the summer. There's the one coming up in April here at the Opera Hall in downtown Sonora. Uh, it, I encourage everybody to find out about it on the second Saturday. Um, I don't know the dates right now. I think it starts on the 6th and it goes for two weeks in April. Oh, wow. The biggest thing for me is I'm going to do something that's so far out of my comfort zone. I've never done this before. Oh, cool. It's, I want to hear about it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to start an online uh, art gallery. What? Um, and uh, it's it's going to be called. Now I want, I, I've got to ask you to envision this. Okay. I don't have a, I don't have a picture or a painting. Okay. There's a flying, just imagine a flying Canada goose. Uh, you know the Canada yeah, goose? Sure. The long neck? Yep. They're all over here. Yeah. So as as he's flying, his wings are down, kind of sheltering, like you'd see a picture of. Uh, well, anyway, it's just a picture of a goose in flight. There's a bronc rider on top of that goose. With his he my bron my bronc rider is riding up with his hand up. Yahoo! Okay. He's holding <laughs> onto his reins. So he's actually not on his horse. He's on the goose. The title of the gallery is Ride 'Em Honkers. Wildlife and Western Art Gallery, and I will encourage people that are uh, wildlife and Western artists, whether it's three-dimensional or two. Three-dimensional is like uh, those people that craft um, wild fowl, um, birds, or sure. um, out of wood or other things. Anything like that or Remington stuff, or two-dimensional like a painting uh, or drawings to um, – Show them at the gallery. It will be online. There'll be a consignment type type of a deal, and it's gonna. I want to have it happen around September this year. Give me time to do that. Hmm. Set it up. I'm really excited. I have no clue how to do a business, so I can't wait to do it. <laughs> that's awesome, Jeff. That's that's really <laughs> exciting. I love that that terror of having something you know you want to do and not knowing how to do it. <laughs> oh, geez. It is terror. It is terror filled. I must say. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, um, so first of all, thank you so much for coming on and talking about pa um, painting and art. I, I just love your passion for it and your knowledge was, was really great. Um, so thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find you? You, you mentioned some art shows coming up where can, do you have any place that people can find your art or um, I guess the art shows coming up is a great place to check it out. Yeah, at the um, Tuolumne County Arts Association is hosting the art show. It's in downtown Sonora at the Opera Hall in April. Just look for it in the newspapers locally. Yeah, it'll be down there. Great. Um, and you can you can they can email me at, at jscaff at yahoo dot com. There you if go. People want. I don't have anything on a, on a file for people to look at because right. I don't have anything for sale right now. Right. And like I mentioned, we will um, we'll share some links into our the Facebook mm -hmm. group. You want to see some of his art? Um, he he emailed me some photos of some stuff he's had finished and some stuff he's had he's working on, and we'll just share some of his yeah. art there. And, uh, and if you want to see some of that, that's great. Um, in the meantime, we're going to ask you the two silly questions, and we're going to get you out of here. This is my favorite part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to say a sentence or two, and casually drop the name of the most famous person you've ever met. Nineteen fifty three. I was on uh, in Hollywood, California. I was on the Art Linkletter show, Kids Say the Darndest Things. And that show, every child that answered correctly, whatever the question was, got a prize. Now, I want you to imagine that I'm a little guy on this show. So the name I'm dropping is Art Linkletter. Okay. The answer, the answer to the question of what are those eight things that come out from that octopus that goes underwater what are those called and joe's answer was testicles not tentacles and that uh, the i i have never heard and i wasn't afraid i've never been a, around an audience of course i'm a little kid they laughed like crazy and i didn't know why i thought i got the and i got the answer right they gave me the prize yes you did i mean i got the answer right to me crazy that's so a way to make letters. sure you end up on tv too with that one <laughs> yep <laughs> That's a good okay, one. I'm ready man. for the next one. I, give me the next one. I'm ready. Okay, Joe. In your opinion, what is the greatest all time cartoon theme song? Popeye the Sailor Man, dude. Absolutely. 
<laughs> Another one for Popeye. There we go. He's strong to the finish because he eats his finish. It's like finish. Absolutely. That's what my dad said. It's iconic. Oh. Yes, it is. Yes. Well, hey, Joe, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know you were nervous about coming on. You weren't sure, but I th- dude, this was great. This was aw- this is exactly what I was hoping for. Your knowledge was amazing. You had some great stories, great anecdotes, and uh, this was awesome. So thank you so much for coming oh, thank on. You. Um, Thanks, and uh, everybody, make sure you uh, like, share, subscribe these episodes, um, and, uh, share it with someone that you, that might, uh, learn something about art or, um, painting or anything. Um, this is a great way to grow the show. Um, until next time, don't be a jerk. Don't be a jerk. Anyway.